This is Will Nunziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with world-renowned musical ventriloquist, the one and only Kevin Driscoll. But before we get to our interview, here is a sneak peek at Kevin's incredible talent. How do you know who the guy is? The one carrying the suitcase. <laughs> That's true, I guess. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. We got the all I can lose. We got the all I can lose. Ready, ready, Doug? One, two, three, four. We got the all I can lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the all I can lose. Kevin and friends, how are you? I'm good. You no, know, no, he's not good. He's not good at all. Yeah, I'm good. I'm gooder than I'm gooder. Uh, better, you're better. That's what I said. I'm gooder. Kevin, yeah. who are you, Kevin, who are you joined by today? Well, this is my friend uh, Jerry here. Hi, hi. And this is Doug the Talking Dog. Hi, I'm Doug the Talking Dog. Doug. Hi, hi, everyone. Well, listen, Kevin. I love the um. I love that all three of you were in our the last clip we just saw the um the Omicron blues. Talk to me about what made you think about creating that. Well, obviously I know because we're living through it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's, it's 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 a song for kids. All right, it's a song for kids. It's made up of just five notes. It's very simple. Uh, five notes from D to A, so D A A G F E D, and it's, it's very simple. We got the Omicron Blues. We had another song called uh, "We're Superheroes" because we wear our mask. Yeah, because we're superheroes, we're gonna ask. Because superheroes wear a mask. Yeah, and and, and so they don't get uh, you know COVID, All right? So they don't get COVID. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we're gonna get vaccinated. We want everyone to get vaccinated. That's I love it. You're well. You're all doing God's work. You're kind of like a 21st century. Mr. Rogers meets, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I wish I had you to watch on PBS growing up, Kevin. And I want to know, though, Kevin, first and foremost, where were you born? And when did you realize that you had a love of ventriloquism? Well, I was born in Sumner, Nebraska. Tiny town, tiny town. It was a very tiny town. Sumner, Nebraska. <laughs> How tiny was it? It was 236 people. But, uh, you know, we even had a zoo. Had? Yeah, we had to close the zoo. You had to close the zoo? Why? You had to close the zoo? Yeah, we had to close the zoo. <laughs> Why? The chicken died? Yeah! <laughs> You're laughing at these old jokes. <laughs> but, but uh, yes, I, I, was, I really was born in Sumner, Nebraska, population 236 people. And I was watching the ventriloquist on the black and white Ed Sullivan show uh, back in the, in the 60s. I was, I'm... You know, I'm, I'm old. He's really, really old. I'm not that old. I didn't come over on the Mayflower. Was it Noah's Ark? No, it wasn't <laughs> Noah's Ark. I'm, I'm sorry. It was, um, it was just amazing that these ventriloquists could make the puppets talk. Yeah. And I didn't really, um, ha well, I, when I came to Boston, I, I, I saw Jeff Dunham. And he, I don't know if you know who he, who he of is. Of course. But he, but he's the number one, uh, and, and plus he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's, he's not, not, not like you. He's a good guy. Okay, okay. okay. But, um, but Jeff has always been amazing. His career skyrocketed when he invented Ahmed. And I was, I was watching uh, Jeff Dunham taking my son to see his shows uh, long before, before Ahmed. And it, he always impressed me. But also the ventriloquist on the Ed Sullivan show, the Edgar Bergen and tr with Charlie McCarthy and... And Senior Wences with his hand puppet. Yeah. And, and all of the uh, all of the ventriloquist. So I always enjoyed it. And quite frankly, I was uh, I was the GM for an internet company. So I was pretty busy with uh, with my with my life and trying to keep things going with the company and everything. And I thought I was having a heart attack. So anyway, I went to the doctor. The doctor said, uh, well, you know, I, I know you like the big bucks, but you're not going to be around if you if you keep it up. The stress was was really it was killing me. Wow. So what? So I decided that uh, I wouldn't do that anymore, and I became a uh, full-time children's entertainer, entertaining children ages two to one hundred and two. Yeah, not very good though. 
Yeah, he's not very good. <laughs> Aw. Hey, guys, be nice to Kevin. Now, listen, I want to know, too, Kevin, well, you are excellent. And I love your trademark line, we learn better when we laugh. I think it's something that we need now more than ever. I'm curious to know, during this time, did you feel that your your skill set was needed now more than ever, you know, especially helping those people out there who needed a little boost? I don't know. I, I don't think I'm that good, uh, but I know that I needed to do something because all of our events in March 2020, all of our events at, at daycare centers and senior centers and schools and libraries and the, all of our Cub Scout events, everything was canceled. And I belong to a group with the uh, ventriloquist workshop and, and a worldwide uh, ventriloquist uh, uh, organization. And someone said, you know, we should uh, do some Facebook live shows. And I didn't really know much about it. But so I thought, well, that sounds good. So I started it on Wednesday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Yeah, because he's, he's a fool. Right, right. Well, basically what it was. <laughs> but so that was our first show, April 1st, 2020. And we'd been doing two shows every, every Wednesday ever since. And, and now we have people from all over the world uh, attend. And if all of them, uh, if all my fans and all of our, our, our viewers, if they all send us a dollar, you know, I'll, I'll have two dollars. Yeah, I'll have two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so funny. Listen, Kevin, I also want to know when you decided to kind of, you know, build out your brand in the formation of Driscoll Productions. Well, I was always a musician. Uh, I've been playing music professionally since I was in high school. Again, I was in Nebraska, so you didn't have to be that good to be the best around. You know, but <laughs> but I was, uh, I was very fortunate. I went to the Berkeley College of Music, and I was always playing music. And my bands, I had to call it something, so I just called it Driscoll Productions. I think it could be generic. So I had a, a duo, a trio, or a quartet. At one point, I had 21 musicians on stage with us, it, whatever they called for. And my band would play for whatever... Uh, whatever events that people would pay us for. Yeah, they're not very good. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I do pretty good. No, no, you don't. <laughs> I love, Kevin, that you've surrounded yourself with two uh, beings that are positive reinforcement. Uh, well, <laughs> they, they uh, you know. I've, they I've, keep I've you taken, grounded. I've taken a lot from them over the year. Yeah, and you kept every cent. I, I didn't keep every cent. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. Oh, 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 no, 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 please, Doug. Oh, no, no, I, I'm sorry. He wants to do his one impersonation of Elvis Presley. I, I'm, do I'm it. sorry. Yeah, do it, Doug, do it. Okay, Doug. Oh, you're going to sing Hound Dog? No, not yet. No, what are you going to do? Oh, okay, he wants to do his impersonation of Elvis Presley. Okay, I'll count to three. But Jerry, you count to three, he'll do his impersonation. Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Ready? One, two, three. That's his impersonation of Elvis Presley. The singer that died a long time ago. <laughs> Kevin, I could speak with you forever. Before we get going, I want to let our audience know from more of the amazing Kevin Driscoll. And you have to check out all of his videos, all of his songs, all of the people that he's had on his live shows. I'm so excited, Kevin. Um, all the links are right below this video. I'm excited because, you know, I've spoken with... Um, a few artists who are ventriloquists, but not quite like you. And these are ventriloquists all around the world. And I'm excited though, too, for you and joining Phoenix 360, within the app is a live stream option where actually you'd be able to do your live shows. And actually, dare I say, besides Venmo and Zelle and wherever else, you know, people have been live streaming and how they've made money in the past, Phoenix, Phoenix has their own monetary system within the app. So for people to, go to your shows like you would to a theater, you'd have to pay a ticket price. And so I'm excited that you're joining this app just for that sake, but let alone also meeting with other artists all around the globe. And I guess my final question for you, Kevin, is what are you most optimistic about in 2022? For you, your, your, your band of, I don't want to call you puppets. You guys are, you guys are, you know. Whatever you want to. Whatever you want to call it. You can't call me a dummy. You are a dummy. No, no, you're the dummy. You know who the dummy is? The one carrying the suitcase. Yeah. But I'm up. <laughs> I want to know what you're most optimistic about looking into 2022, Kevin. Just optimistic that more and more people will realize how important it is to get vaccinated to get this thing under control. Because until we get the, the virus under control, 
the, the economy is still not going to prosper. People are still not going to have jobs. A lot of people can't work. A lot of entertainers I know it's, well, are still not working because the daycare centers are still closed. The schools don't allow outside entertainers. So all of those individuals and entertainers who depend on their livelihood for schools and libraries and churches and, and, and Jewish Chabad events and other things, they, they need a place to perform. And right now they can't. So I'm optimistic that more and more people will realize the importance of getting the vaccine and hopefully they will get the vaccine and then get boosted and we can get this thing under control because until the virus is under control, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy for anyone. I don't think worldwide, we need to get this thing under control. Yeah. Did he say that? <laughs> I know sometimes he sounds smart. Who knew? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know, sorry, is that a cue card? What the heck? <laughs> okay. The three of you, it is so nice to meet you, but Kevin, thank you so much for spreading your light and your joy. And you know what? I'm so happy, and I'm sure many people are, that you were able to follow your childhood bliss. You know, you mentioned Ed Sullivan. I can't stop thinking about my grandfather who um, worked with him. He was an announcer for NBC for many, many years. His name was Bill Wendell, but um, he worked with Ed Sullivan. And, you know, when you mentioned that show, I can only imagine, you know, those old school variety shows. I wish they were around now because Kevin, you'd have your own, but you know what? It's going to happen for you as you continue to do your own shows in front of that beautiful green screen and making people laugh in a time when, you know, it's a little dark out there. It is, but again, hopefully people will get the vaccine and we'll get this under control and things will get back to the new normal. I don't think they'll ever be what they was, what it was before. But um, for, for us, the, the pandemic has been a blessing. It's because it's forced me with, with this, you know, requirement that I made for myself to do two shows every, every week to come up with new material. That's right. <laughs> The same jokes over and over. <laughs> yeah, <he does. laughs> Be nice to Kevin. Listen, yeah. um, it is so nice to meet all of you, Kevin Driscoll, everybody, and God bless you. And I'm so excited that we are now connected. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>